Jeff, top of the morning. This is your Fender Hot Rod Deluxe George Benson model. What a beautiful piece of gear this is. Well, what's not beautiful about it is you're having issues with channel switching. Something that, um, that we see from time to time on much older hot rod family amps. But she's quite, quite handsome there, huh? She wants to play, she just can't. So, um, finally, got you on deck. We're gonna plug her in, power her up, spin her around and see why she's acting so naughty. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, El Jefe, El Jefe, as they say in the vernacular. Uh, let me get that off. And then we're going to focus on... I, mean, uh, I got you close up here, so I have no space. Um, these. And these guys. That guy right there. Comprise uh, a critical part of the low voltage system inside of this amp and um, are almost single-handedly responsible for all reverb and channel switching failures. Um, so what typically happens is um, there's a lot of current and, and voltage being, rather heat being dissipated here. Um, these are knocking down voltage from the transformer. Um, and by the time it comes out of these diodes there, um, you'll get a plus and minus uh, 16 volt tap, respectively. Um, in so doing, a lot of heat is being shed by these two guys. And what tends to happen is um, the, the small pads are overwhelmed. They eventually char uh, and then lift, and then you lose connectivity. So your, your plus or minus 16 volt rail will go down. So I'm going to take this light here, which is, has failed. That's fine. Let me just turn this on here. I could accomplish the same thing. It's fine. And I, I could, I can see that there is some browning and charring right here along the board. You can kind of see it there, right there. You see that? Um, usually I can deflect a little bit of light underneath the circuit board and get a, a better view for you, but I, I could already see it. So um, th there's also another component that is Let's see, it's this guy right here, which is, you see that? There's a dropping resistor for uh, the foot switch supply. And that also uh, causes a lot of issues. Uh, the, the traces underneath this are incredibly frail and weak. So that any sort of uh, overheating just vaporizes them. And I'm hoping that's not what we're looking at here. So um, the George Benson models are pretty interesting. Um, I think it would be, uh, cool for you guys to see what I'm seeing. So let me pop this off. You guys may not have seen this before, but take a look at the, the power transformer. There's the model designation there. These are actually glued on silicon rings. Why are they glued on? I'm not certain. Why is their presence, uh, Required? I, I'm not quite sure. But that is a proprietary transformer for this particular model. It f almost feels like... It almost feels like it's a shield. It almost feels like there's a shield there. If you kind of look at the way the, the sides are bent, Feels like a shield. So maybe a little Faraday cage. So all right, update soon. Let me uh, get this thing 
hooked up to some power. Okay, so just focus through the handle. Sorry about that. At get this moved over. There you go. We're gonna see if we have plus or minus 16 volts, and then we're gonna check some other measurements as well. So let's get her warmed up. And this was purchased uh, by way of Sweetwater. Sweetwater, uh, when helping this um, outstanding gentleman troubleshoot his amp and to avoid a warranty return, uh, in their wisdom, instructed him to change the tubes. That's what their technical team said for this amp. So as soon as I heard that, I, I, I knew it was just going to go downhill for him. So... I wanted to take matters into my own hands and make sure he gets proper service. All right. That's quite a biz bit of buzz there. The reverb is very noisy. I wonder if the tank is backwards. The tank is not backwards. So that might be an indicator of what's going on here. I've, I've never heard a reverb uh, circuit as noisy as I have uh, with this one on, on this family of amps. So um, this op amp, oh, watch this. Okay, this just might be some Way they bent these cables. Okay, so uh, this this op amp that I have highlighted in the shot here is the one that's doing the reverb duties. So it's going to be uh, doing drive and recovery rolls, and I'm wondering if if it's getting what it needs. So let's get back over here and just focus on that for a minute. So we gotta get my lead sorted out. All right. Okay, we have plus 16, but we don't have minus 16. So that's your issue. The, the negative side of your low voltage supply is gone. So. Yeah. Pardon me. Yeah. So you're not getting uh, negative 16 volts where it needs to go. This guy. Right here. It's kaput. I'm getting the same 44 volts at the bottoms here, but on the top end, here I'm getting positive 16. And then here, I'm getting exactly one volt. So that's a hell of a drop here. This, this resistor has almost opened up or, or become greater by a very large margin. Let's measure that thing. And I bet that all that noise in a reverb circuit's gonna go away. So while I'm in here, uh, while I have this board out, uh, the, the next things to go um, will certainly be these diodes here. They're not gonna go anywhere. Or the next thing to cause damage, I should say. So I'll replace these with the appropriate ones, except I will put an air gap there, which will, um, it's not the air gap that's gonna do the job. It's going to be the extra lead length that actually dissipates the heat we need. So it's not the actual body of the component, and that's a misconception. It's, it's the actual heat sinking created by the additional lead length. And what you could actually do on the backside is just poke your leads all the way through and then coil them up like that, nice and flat, 
and then you'll create some little heat sinks. But then I wouldn't recommend that because what if they what if they move at some point and then short things out? Huh? Wow, there was a there was a a bit of solder. Is this the back side of that resistor? Is is this little guy right here? Where is it at? It's next to that cap. Okay, look right there. Is this little nugget right there the back side of that large resistor that I just showed you? This guy right here. Look at that. Inquiring minds and all that. So let's let's get back to our meter here. Let's see if we can ohm this guy out. Let's see what he's given us. Okay, let's check the good one. Okay, 470. This one's also 470. So that means uh, the trace on the other side, or the solder pad rather, has been compromised. But I'm gonna have to do a repair. Talk to you soon.